Hello, and welcome to my week in astronomy, or the things that I found interesting in the world of astronomy and astrophysics that I've found out about over the past week. And this week I want to talk about a very good bit of observation on the asteroid Pallas, as recorded in a paper called The Violent Collisional History of the Aquously Evolved to Pallas. And I'll link to both the paper, which is behind a paywall, but there are ways of getting around that, and I'll leave that up to you. And also I'll link to an MIT press release about the subject. And for quick reference, 2 Pallas is the asteroid's minor planet designation. It's called Pallas, but it's designated that. I'll start by quoting from that paper. It says in its abstract that Asteroid 2 Pallas is the largest main belt object not yet visited by a spacecraft, making its surface geology largely unknown and limiting our understanding of its origin and collisional evolution. So that's why it's interesting. We simply don't know about it in anywhere near the detail of the other large asteroid belt objects, for example Ceres, which we've sent a satellite to. So the researchers used the Very Large Telescope. It's well named, and it's one of our finest ground-based telescopes in use. What it actually is is a group of four telescopes, each with a mirror over 8 metres across with four smaller auxiliary telescopes around that. And the research was done using an imager called SPHERE, which barely acronyms to Spectropolarimetric High Contrast Exoplanet Research. Yeah, yeah. The combined effects of these mean the telescope is very good for this sort of observation. So SPHERE, while the name shows its origin in searching for exoplanets, is quite a broad thing. In particular, it has very high precision adaptive optics. I'll link to a video I made before about the subject, but the short is it helps correct for the effects of the Earth's atmosphere on space observations. The same thing that gives you a very broad image just of an exoplanet will give you a lot of detail if you use the same thing to look at something much closer. So for an asteroid, it gives you a lot more help with finding surface detail. The Very Large Telescope is quite well set up for this. Large collecting area allows the mirrors of the telescope to collect more light. So if you think of it a bit like a large diameter bucket being able to collect more rainwater. So for detecting objects that are quite faint, like asteroids will be, it's very useful. And for small detail, it's the combination of the four telescopes that's important. To measure small details, we often use this metric called angular resolution. The smallest angle two objects can be separated before you can determine that they're two separate objects. It comes up quite a lot in astronomy, and finer angular resolution is heavily dependent on the total diameter of this combined group of telescopes. And because you've got four telescopes that you can move around and apart, this does very well at that. So that's the instrument they used, the high detail image that they found quite a lot about this asteroid. In particular, they noticed that its history was very violent, many collisions with other asteroids, resulting in numerous large craters. And what the authors do is they simulated collisions for an asteroid with Pallas' orbital parameters, this very eccentric orbit and inclined orbit compared to other asteroids in the asteroid belt, and see how this impacts the number of collisions that could cause a large crater. They calculate the number of events that could cause a crater with a diameter of over 40 kilometres in their simulation. And they compare this to two other large asteroid belt objects, Ceres and Vesta. It's complicated simulation, but you can get an intuitive understanding of this quite simply. What you need to know is that the velocity of an impact will depend on the differing velocities of each object in the collision. So if two objects are in very similar orbits, say they're both close to circular, travelling in the same direction, going around in the asteroid belt, the collisional velocity will actually be very small, even if the objects are travelling fairly fast. But for one with a high eccentricity orbit, which is very different to a lot of the other objects it's going past, its impact velocity will be a lot larger. So an object with a highly eccentric orbit should have more higher velocity collisions. And higher velocity collisions, it's a bit like a punch in the face. The same fist hitting faster will do a lot more damage. So in this case, the asteroid's going to get larger craters. And in particular, the number of potential asteroids it could collide with 
that could form these large craters will be greater for Pallas than it will be for Ceres or Vesta, just because they're hitting faster. It's a very simple and intuitive explanation. It's rather beautiful that it's worked out that it works with more complicated simulations, getting a far faster velocity of impact and expecting the larger number of large craters which we do actually see in these images. The researchers do a couple of other interesting things as well. They reconstruct the 3D shape of Pallas from the multiple images they have. And they looked at the Pallas family, which is Pallas and a large number of smaller nearby asteroids that form a distinct group around it. And because they've now got these very good images, they're going to try and start to get an idea of the events that may have formed this family of asteroids. So that's all on Pallas that I wanted to say. But a last little note before I go. Last week I talked about the Solar Orbiter, so I'll just finish by saying that it did launch and the launch went well. I'll link to the European Space Agency article about it, but in short, launch was fine, communications have been established with the satellite, and various other features, so the solar panels, the boom arm, and the electrical antennas have been deployed. Next, they're going to test manoeuvring in more detail, as well as individually testing each instrument on the telescope. It'll take about two years to reach the orbit where it'll perform the scientific research it's doing, so they've got plenty of time to get this done. That's all for this week then, goodbye.